Hello and welcome back to the channel as we get ready today to take a look at the 2020 Connecticut American Innovation Dollar. But before we do that, let's quickly go over the upcoming schedule uh, just to give everybody an idea of what's coming up um, all the way until November 4th when we should have the Sitka Shah Women's Quarter, the final quarter for this year. Um, anyhow, September 16th, we'll do Maryland. September 23rd, we will do South Carolina, and that will close out 2020. And then September 30th, New Hampshire, October 7th, Virginia, October 14th, New York, October 21st, North Carolina, and that'll close out 2021. And then October 28th, we will start 2022 with Rhode Island. And then on October 28th, according to the U.S. Mint calendar, that's when the Sitka Shaw Women's Quarter comes out. So it'll probably get here towards the end of that week. Um, so right now, tentatively, November 4th will be the Sitka Shaw American Women's, Women's Quarter program quarter, the final one for this year. Um, and then the following week, which would be, what, uh, November 11th, we will get right back into the rest of the 2022 innovation dollars and then on from there. Anyhow, that's enough talking about the schedule. Let's take a look at this week's coin. The $1 American Innovation coin representing Connecticut honors the Gerber variable scale. Joseph Gerber was born in Austria in 1924. Following imprisonment in a Nazi labor camp at the age of 15, he and his mother escaped to the United States and settled in Connecticut. While in college, he invented the Gerber variable scale, which many consider the most revolutionary engineering tool since the slide rule. In the 1950s, the variable scale was one of the most widely used tools for engineers and architects worldwide. Though calculators and computers have replaced it, Gerber's scale was integral to the scientific advancement of the 20th century. So that's, um, that's what this coin represents. Uh, looking at it, the reverse of this coin, which is what we're looking at right now, depicts the Gerber variable scale being used to increase a geometric shape by 200%. A shape which resembles the state of California, by the way. Um, so before we get into all that, before we get into the Gerber variable scale specifically, looking at this coin, I like it. It's the scale. It's once again, the only way they can depict just like with the polio vaccine, the only way to depict what it does or what it's looking at is with those lines that kind of um, are an extension of what it's doing. Um, I like the way the field is sort of roughed up at the upper part of the coin. And then at the bottom of the coin where it says Connecticut, the field is um, smooth. The sculptor, Renata Gordon, whose initials are almost at the, at the very bottom, right above the T in Connecticut, the last T in Connecticut, and then Richard Masters, whose initials are right where the, the roughed up field meets the smooth field. Um, and that is, and then you see the, the Gerber variable scale, which essentially looks like a ruler, which you'll see in a minute. And it is taking that bottom image, what it's depicted doing in this is taking that bottom outline of the image and making the dimensions larger to create the image again in that larger scale. Um, and that's what the Gerber variable scale does. It's used in engineering, probably not so much anymore since like, like I said, computers have, and calculators have taken over the need for a tool like this. But taking a closer look, this is what the Gerber variable scale, variable scale would look like up close. And you can see this image is upside down. My bad. Oh. But you can see at what should be the top, but it is the bottom where the zero, the two, the four, the six, the eight, and the 10 are. If you look at what that is, that's actually a spring that's been stretched. And the thing to the left of the 10 
slides up and down, and that's how you change the dimensions. I I don't fully, I don't fully understand. I, I understand what they're saying. I don't understand the operation of the scale. I guess is what I'm trying to explain. But that is what the Gerber variable scale is, and appar- apparently before computers. In the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, it was extremely important for um, engineering and things like that, helping them figure out, oh, I don't know what that noise was, helping them figure out how to uh, adjust the um, size of things, the size of a graph without losing the aspect ratio of it. Anyhow, let's jump over to the microscope and take a look at this coin. Editor Andark here. I mistakenly said, um, I don't know why I said this. I knew what I was saying, or I knew what I was looking at. I mistakenly said that the image on the back of the coin was California. It is Connecticut. I don't know why I said California. Um, I knew it was the Connecticut coin. So... That was a mistake. But then I was thinking about it, and I don't like the way I kind of described this. So I asked ChatGPT to help me explain or describe the the Gerber variable scale. And ChatGPT's response was, the Gerber variable scale is like a special ruler that can stretch or or shrink to different sizes. Imagine a ruler that you can adjust to make the marks closer together or farther apart. This helps people measure things or draw lines and a graph more easily, especially when they need to change the scale of their drawing without having to calculate or use different tools. It's often used to make graphs or charts clearer for fitting everything on the page without changing the actual proportions of the information. So that is ChatGPT explaining to me specifically what the Gerber variable scale is. Okay, back to the video. Here we are with a closer look at the actual coin itself, and we can see the features I described, the Gerber variable scale off to the right, the geometric shape that is being uh, proportionally enlarged, um, going from about 9 o'clock to 1 o'clock around the edge of the field. It says United States of America in a very um, stickish kind of font. I don't know how else to say it. Um very clean lines, uh, very straight letters. Um, And then it says Gerber variable scale, probably I would say down around uh, between seven and eight o'clock in the the middle of the roughed up field. And then at the very bottom, it says the word Connecticut um, going from about between five and six all the way over to about seven. Um, I like this coin. Uh, It's simple. It is pleasing to my eyes, I guess, the straight lines, the geometric features. Um, It's not too crowded. I like how instead of just having a smooth field, they've roughed up the field. Um, So they've filled that area, but with not with something that makes it that area, that space in the field seem like it's overcrowded or stuffed. It's just they've dimpled. I guess, I I don't know how else to explain it. They've dimpled the surface of the coin. Um, And I like the way it looks. So I would say that this is probably at this point in um, my top three or four for sure. Uh, And maybe I keep saying that I will start to compile a list and maybe I'll do it before next video and I'll start keeping track of what coins are in my top three as far as appealing for me to look at. And that's really our look at the 2020 uh, Connecticut Innovation Dollar. Remember, I I said that on October 28th is the release date for the Sitka Shaw American Women's Quarter. So hopefully by the end of that week, I have the coin in hand and I can have the video out for that coin by the following Monday. If not, it'll be that video for that week will come out at some point in the week. If it's not Monday... I'm sure it'll be Tuesday by Wednesday at the latest, all just depending on when the U.S. Mint Fulfillment Center gets the coin to me. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or criticisms, 
please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. If you don't want to leave your comment for public viewing, my email address is always in the description of the video. You can email me with whatever you have to say. I want to thank everybody for tuning into this video, and I hope that you all have a great week.